morning. Thank you for joining Grove Church's online gathering. I'm so glad you're here. Today is Sunday, August 9th, 2020, and we're ready to worship the Lord. But if this is your first time, welcome. Just write new in the comments so we could know that you are here. Uh, and this is what we do every Sunday together online at 1045 a.m. We have a call to worship, which is a short uh, message from the scriptures that reminds us to worship Jesus, to worship God together. Uh, we've been doing other stuff. Probably 10 minutes ago, you were somewhere else doing something else. So it's a good reminder that we're here to worship God together. Then we have a time of confession, recognizing that we need Jesus, that we have gone our own way and, and that we need his healing, restor re restorative work in our lives. And then we have a children's message, a special time where the kids could come and we share what we're talking about with adults, but in a way that people of all ages could understand. And we have a song of worship. There'll be uh, lyrics on there and you could sing and worship God with your voice uh, song. You're, you're at home, so I wanna hear you belt it out. Uh, and then we continue our time in First Peter. We'll hear the scripture from chapter two and jump into it and have a, a time afterwards for a prayer and to respond to generosity and a brief blessing. So, uh, so glad you're here this morning to worship Jesus with us. Our call to worship comes from Psalm 118.24. Uh, and I wanna hear you say, let us rejoice and be glad in it after I say, this is the day that the Lord has made, okay? This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us be glad today as we worship Jesus. But we are reminded that the world is not the way it should be. Uh, pick up a newspaper, uh, go you know, hear the headlines, check on your family, try to make any plans. We know that the world is not the way it should be, not the way that God intended it for good. So I'm gonna read these scriptures and have a time for us to confess our participation in this world that is has deviated from God's plan. The proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Because we have faith in him, we dare to approach God with confidence, trusting that God will forgive our sin and cleanse us from every kind of wrong. Let us confess our sins to Almighty God in this moment of silence. God heard your prayer. And hear this good news from 1 Peter chapter 2. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now, because of Jesus, you have received mercy. Thanks be to God. Thank God for that, that we've received his mercy. As God has given us peace through Christ, so let us pass the peace of Christ to each other. The peace of Christ be with you all and also with you. So let us greet each other online in the comments. Uh, good morning, welcome, peace be with you. As we gather online, as we show that we have been forgiven, we are now God's people. Uh, we can connect with God and with one another because of what Jesus has done. Peace of Christ be with you. Peace be with you. Welcome. We're so glad you're here. May your family experience God's peace. Welcome. Peace be with you. Okay. Let the ch children gather around as we have a special message for them. Good morning, kids. It's Pastor Steve. Do you know where I am? I'm actually on the side of our church building, right? Where we usually come to worship Jesus together. This is the outside part of this building. I don't know if you noticed, is made of stones. Well, today in the Bible passage in 1 Peter chapter 2, uh, we're taught that we are living stones built into a spiritual house. Just like these stones are built into this 
this house of worship, right? The Grove Church building. We are a living stone built together. But the most important part is the cornerstone. The cornerstone is Jesus, right? It's what all these rocks, all these stones, they're built on a firm foundation. It's what makes sure that they don't just crawl and fall and tumble. So what they're stacked on is important. What we're stacked on in life is Jesus. And that is so important. He's our cornerstone. And just like he's the cornerstone, we are stones that are living too. So church is not a building. We've said this before. Church is people. First Peter reminds us that, that we together are the church, just like stones put together a building. But the most important part is Jesus. We can't have a church without Jesus. We can't have uh, stones being built up without a strong foundation of Jesus Christ, our cornerstone. So I know things where we've been far apart. We haven't seen each other. We haven't played and, and you, got, you kids haven't chased each other around for a while. Uh, but what keeps us together is not the building that we come into. It's not this building. I love this building, but it's not this building. It is Jesus, our cornerstone. So even though we're scattered in different places, we are the church because of Jesus. Let us pray. God, we thank you, Lord, uh, that you love these kids, Lord. We thank you that even though we're in different places, some even on vacation, God, but you are our cornerstone. We could build our lives on you. We could build our church family on you, oh God. Thank you for being there, for holding us all together. We pray that you be with these kids, that you bless them, you be with their families, oh God, and that when things seem a little crazy or different, that we know that we are we are based on you, that you are a strong cornerstone that could hold our lives, that could hold our worries, that could hold all the good things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you guys. Stick around, we're gonna worship Jesus and sing. I wanna hear you singing as we worship our cornerstone, Jesus Christ. Greetings, Grove Church. I'm so happy to be with you today. We're singing about the chief cornerstone, which is Jesus the Messiah. If your hope is not in Jesus today, then I pity you because all other things will fail. I encourage you to put your hope only in Christ today and sing with us as we sing the cornerstone.
scripture reading for today is from 1 Peter 2, verses 4 through 10. This is the word of the Lord. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone and a stone that causes men to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Justice. Let us pray. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you that your word speaks, oh God. We thank you that it's uh, effective, Lord. We pray that, that wherever we are, Lord, uh, spiritually, Lord, that you may help us to respond in faith to who you want us to be and how we're to exalt you and build our lives upon you. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Last week we started this book of 1 Peter, written by the Apostle Peter to Christians scattered everywhere uh, and telling them and us by his Spirit, uh, by the Holy Spirit, telling us how to live Christian lives. So our, as you heard already, there's all these images of what it means to be the people of God, what it means to be the church. And uh, these images are actually ancient images found in the Hebrew scriptures, the Bible that first Peter knew and read. But for Gentile believers, for those Christians that he wrote to that do not have that Jewish background, and for some of you, uh, these may be new pictures of what it means to be the church. Peter uses this architectural language of what it means to be the people of God and continues to use these different uh, these phrases that, that may or may not have meaning to you depending on your familiarity with the Old Testament scriptures. You see, centuries before this letter was written, there was uh, people in uh, the people of Israel and God had a promise, a covenant it's called, relationship with them. And God said, I will be your God and you will be my people. And God had these descriptions, this holy nation, this special possession, these type of images for them as they lived up to be the people of God in promise and covenant with God. Our scripture today shows us that these uh, designations for God's people did not end there. That through what Jesus did on the cross, it expanded that not only the select people from this select time period and the select ethnicity would be the people of God, but that God's covenant people, his promised people, includes you and me. It transcends to different nations, different time periods. And we're included as this promised group, this royal priesthood, this holy nation, that we're bound to God in this covenant community. And that's what God does. He makes a community out of us, out of individuals, out of his love and mercy. He brings us all together under this umbrella. So this morning, we're going to look at these images, these pictures of what it means to be the people of God. I think there's different images that are almost like flashcards of one after another of showing what it means to be the people because they're metaphors. So even though they're true and accurate, not only one contains it, it's broader and bigger than one description. Together, they help us to see what God is doing with us and to us. But before we go on, we have to focus on Jesus. And First Peter chapter 2 does that too. It says, talks about Jesus, who Jesus is. 
It says Jesus is our cornerstone, the one that was told uh, years before in the Hebrew scriptures. You see, God has a big plan that spans generations and centuries. So what he is doing, and when we read the New Testament, the, the shorter, newer part of the Bible that is after Jesus and was written in Greek, uh, he shows that this is the plan that God has been working for centuries. Jesus is the one that was promised before, the one, the, the living stone that some people rejected, some people didn't accept. Still happening today, isn't it? There, Jesus being the cornerstone that maybe people you know and love uh, don't uh, come to grips with, haven't accepted uh, the foundation of Jesus Christ and how important he is. You see, Christians, we're Jesus' first people. Without the cornerstone, we're just a pile of rocks our greatest contribution to the world is because of Jesus. And if you were to look at history, you would see that Christians and Christianity has contributed a lot to society, uh, starting orphanages and doing all these humanitarian acts and standing up for women, women's suffrage, and uh, a lot of societal, uh, the freedom of slaves. Christians were on the forefront of all these social movements, right? And today they continue being on the forefront of, of uh, stopping the, the sex trafficking and all those things and those are great things that we do and we do that based on our foundation on Jesus Christ he's taught us how to live he's taught us how to love he's taught us to set free the captives without our foundation of Jesus without Jesus being our cornerstone we we are misshapen we're misguided we we start off going well and we wander away to who God called us to be and what God called us to do. Even though we have great contributions to civics and philosophy and medicine, the arts, our foundation has to firmly be on Jesus Christ, our cornerstone. When we become followers of Christ, when we become Christians, born again, uh, you know, renewed and regenerated by Christ, when you trust Jesus for the first time, he forgives our sins. And yes, that, that leads us to eternity in heaven. And normally you hear that in a lot of presentations of the gospel, and it's true, right? Our, our eternal life is secure in Christ. But he does a lot of stuff here and now. Like he makes us into this community because his mercy, he makes it we're not alone anymore. And even now, Grove Church, as we're scattered, we're still together because we have the same cornerstone. We're still united in him. God does that. He builds a community where there was no community. An image that is uh, of church that is often found in scripture and is one that I love and use a lot is family. It's not found in 1 Peter, but it's found in other places of big brothers and sisters in Christ. But one of the challenges, if that's our only image of the church, then we realize family becomes exclusive. Then we all look alike and talk alike and we don't grow that quickly, right? Because family is kind of closed Right? You only have one or two members of your family added a year of that. But that's why family is a great image because of the closeness and the love, but it's not the perfect image because it doesn't show God moving and working and adding people, adding diversity and expanding boundaries. Right? So uh, family is a beautiful image. But there's these other images in our scripture today that, are, that show the proactivity of God bringing people together, the proactivity of God choosing people. And these mixed metaphors in verse 9 of 1 Peter 2 shows us this. Shows us that you are a chosen people, church. Chosen, that's a biblical word. Have you ever been in a situation where you like wonder, like, why am I here? Why am I doing this? How did I get in this job or stuck in this job or blessed in this job? How did I become a parent? How did I become single again? There are some situations that we don't really choose that we fall into. You know? uh, I, there's probably some of my high school friends that may be watching and saying, Steve, how did you become a pastor? It just doesn't seem like a path you would have chose. Our faith story may seem uh, like it just kind of came together and fell into place. But God shows us that he is proactive. He is the chooser. Right? That he is making things happen, that he's drawing you to him, that he's showing you love, that he's showing you mercy, that he's guiding you, even sometimes when things seem like uh, they're just happening and you have no control over. God chooses you. 
God reminds us that, that we are no accident, right? That you're not watching this by accident. You're not watching this surely solely on the Facebook algorithm. You know, you were chosen by God. Maybe the NBA wouldn't choose you. Maybe the Olympic team wouldn't choose you. Maybe your, your company wouldn't choose you to be a partner. Or maybe they don't even choose you to give a raise. Maybe on that dating app, they just might uh, swipe to the left. But you are chosen by the God Most High, the one who knows you so well, who, who might have reason to skip us over. But out of his mercy and grace, he has selected you. You are part of God's family, Christians, on purpose. You are his special possession. Isn't that amazing? And you may even feel like, hey, Pastor Steve, how do you choose me? I just, I said yes to Jesus. I accepted this. But underneath it all, God woke you up to that. This morning, if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're accepting, but God is choosing beforehand. It's that beautiful, that, that, that amazing, that love that God has that comes before. The Bible says, while we were still sinners, Christ loved us. He's working behind the scenes to draw you closer to him, to choose you. It's not an accident. You are not an accident. Even though you might look at yourself and say, hey, you know, I'm not the strongest player on the team, coach, when it comes to your faith. But God has chosen you. You're part of this vibrant community that he's making, that he's crafting. Another biblical term for community in our scripture today is being a royal priesthood. Right? We have the, the royal part because Jesus is Lord, Jesus is King, Jesus is our brother. We are royal because of who he is and because he's adopted us into that family. But we're also a priesthood. Yes, I'm Pastor Steve, but you are a priest. You are a pastor. You are a spiritual intercessor as believers. You go and you draw people close to God. You go and reach out to them and bring them to, to him. That is your job as part of your identity. That is what God is building. Royal priesthood is a community, but you have a mission. You have a function. We're to participate in spiritual sacrifices. We're to represent God to others. We're to be reconcilers and draw people closer and closer to God. We're to help others worship the God of the Bible that knows them and loves them. You're to be used by God to be part of other people's faith stories. God has made us a royal priesthood and our identity has this role but these responsibilities. We're not made there just to look pretty. We're not put in this community just as a, a group photo. You're called and redeemed and sent out to do the work of God. And in this time of pandemic and social distancing, we're still to bring people to Christ. We're still to share the good news of Jesus and whatever mediums you use. We're still to lift people up in prayer and pray for each other. Pray for that person who's struggling. Pray for those people who have doubts. Pray for one another. We're to live lives that are pleasing to God, even if we don't see each other as much as we did before. You're part of a royal priesthood. You're part of a holy nation. First Peter was written to Christians scattered all over through the world, through the known world back then, right? Places that took take a long time to get to. And he's saying, even though you're in this different provinces, you are one nation, right? This holy nation doesn't have imports, doesn't have exports, doesn't have elections, but it's being the people of God. And today it seems like our country the united states where where we are where grove church is located and calls home and thanks god to be in uh is experiencing division right there's division over all these issues over uh black lives matter over uh the role of the police over the november election there's division on how to address covid 19 right there's all these different places that that people feel pulled in and 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 are uh it kind of makes us look like we're enemies and we don't trust each other and we're losing friends we could go on and on of these divisions but what does it look like to be the nation a holy nation to be god's people first 
that are first and foremost allegiance that we pledge to is to Jesus. Right? That, and that when we engage these issues in our country, in our neighborhood, in our families, that we come from it from the standpoint of Jesus first. We come from it of our identity is in Christ. Not in a political party, not in a uh, passport identity, but that we are Jesus people first. That we are a holy nation. And that not that our you know other affiliations shape our Christianity, right? Not that our political party shapes our Christianity, not that our uh, citizenship affects our Christianity, but that our Christianity, our faith in Christ, our holy nation, shapes our participation in the world around us. We are Jesus first people. We are Christians foremost. As I said, you know, as the scripture says, once we were not a people, once we were just individuals doing our own thing, but God made us a people. Once we were people who had no mercy, but God showed us his love and mercy. And that since God made us a people and showed us his mercy, that's what unites us. So in some ways, we have more kinship with uh, Ethiopian Christians and Hungarian believers and Haitian Jesus followers and El Salvadorian Christians, we have more connection with those folks than our cousin who lives downstairs from us. Because our identity is in Christ. Our first nationality is holy, set apart to do God's work. God saved us into this community of people. And all these pictures, all these images, royal priesthood, living stone, spiritual house, God made us these people. He made us this community that's diverse because what unites us is Christ. Not our skin color, not our uh, place of birth, not even the beautiful garden state which we call home. It's God's love and mercy. So while you may pride yourself on being independent, on accomplishing stuff on your own, maybe you're just used to being self-sufficient, God thought best not to leave you on your own, not to just uh, make you a Christian and then send you to heaven, but to wrestle with this community of believers, to be part of this spiritual house built of living stones. I know a lot of people who say, you know what, I don't need a church. Even in this internet age, right, where we're gonna, I don't need a church, I could just do it on my own, I could pray, I could read the Bible, I could talk to God. And part of me, I, I understand it's a beautiful thing that God hears your prayers here and now, that you don't need to call Pastor Steve to pray to God, he hears you directly. But God, as part of that relationship, puts you into community. He takes that you and makes it a we. I tell this, we kind of lose this in the Bible because it's a language issue, but almost every you in the, you know, you are a spiritual house, you are a child, you are my special possession, the you is plural. It's a, y'all are a special possession, right? It's not an individual, it's meant to be a community. So if you're watching this and you're not connected to a church, don't let this pandemic keep you separated. It's more challenging because, you know, six months ago you would have came, uh, been part of the service come down have coffee for 15 minutes or two hours depending on your comfort level it's a little bit more challenging now but God is still building a community God still wants us to build together on the living stone so let's embrace God's mercy by being the people of God together on Wednesday, we've been looking at the book of Acts at an outdoor Bible study. Uh, actually, today is the last day to RSVP if you want to come to the next Bible study, which is the last one in August. So RSVP right after this. Uh, email or call the church building. Uh, but we're looking at this and it shows us how people tried to figure this out of what does it look like to be the Bible, to be the people of God. So if you haven't read Acts, it's a beautiful, fun read of the history of the church. I recommend that. So while everyone is looking to divide, let's build each other up. Build each other up on the cornerstone of Christ. Let God challenge our biases and our assumptions and make us the community that he wants us to be. You, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, 
but now you have received mercy. You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into the wonderful light. Let us pray. God, we thank you, Lord, that you hear our prayers. We thank you that you have a firm foundation where we can build our life upon. So we pray for those folks, Lord, who are not sure what is the foundation of their life. We pray for those who have always claimed you as foundation, but things have been shaking. Uh, circumstances and challenges have been uh, shaking that foundation, Lord, and things seem unsecure. Pray that you wrap your arms around them, Lord, that they may know that you're good, Lord, that you are there, that you are working all things, that you're present. God, we also ask for your uh, mercy, Lord, in this time of confusion and misinformation, Lord. Lord, you are the way, the truth, and the life, and the devil is the father of lies. So, Lord, in this time of misinformation, there's people that are sowing confusion, sowing doubts, Lord, uh, sowing things that are, are, are confusing us, Lord, and, and we're looking for truth, we're looking for stability, Lord, and it's also reaping division in our country, Lord. So we pray against that, Lord. We pray, Lord, for your truth may prevail, Lord, because you are one who loves truth. We pray for uh, against this confusion, Lord, against this division, oh God. We pray, uh, Lord, that you may handle those folks that are purposely sowing misinformation. God, those are purposely distorting facts, Lord, to create and to confuse and to convince, oh Lord. Lord, we pray for our nation, Lord, in this trying time. We pray that you may work and you may do your will through imperfect leaders, oh God, through imperfect communities. Lord, that your perfect will may be done. Lord, we pray that you help us grow and that your greater uh, universal church, Lord, to rise up and to be the hands and feet of Jesus, to be that spiritual house in unsteady times, to be those royal priests, God, who go and, and draw people to you and, and work on your behalf and represent you and bring our reconciliation to broken relationships, Lord, and broken spiritual lives. Help us to see our role in these changing times. Help us to, to obey you even with these uh, restrictions and these challenges and this distance we have with one another. May we faithfully be your church. We pray this in Jesus' name who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Before we come to the conclusion of our time together, I want to remind you that we leave this space to respond in generosity. And I want to thank you for your generosity. Uh, we are pretty close, not exactly, but pretty close to our giving budget of what we do and, you know, a year ago when we were all in the building. So we know that is because of your uh, giving and, and participation that we're able to continue the ministry even with these challenges. Uh, so thank you for that. We're able to continue to support missionaries and agencies and good causes. Uh, so thank you for giving to the Lord through Grove Church NJ. Org. And you could uh, continue to do that if you're called to the mailing or at the website uh, below. Also, you can uh, submit your prayer request so we could pray specifically for your need. Thank you so much for coming. I also want to remind you that this is the last chance. Uh, email or call uh, the church offices to let us know that you're coming to this Wednesday, 7 p.m. Outdoor, social distance, mask wearing uh, hand sanitized provided uh, Bible study as we jump into Acts chapter 2. Uh, it will be a last Bible study for the month of August. So please RSVP, today is the last day for that. Receive this blessing before we go our uh, separate ways, before you continue to do what you are doing. Uh, remember that God is with you. May God bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace right now and always. 
Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. See you next Sunday.